All right, triage number 12 on December 5th. Here we go. Let's go jump right into it. Bugs, bugs, bugs. Um, hopefully none of these are 3.8 bugs because, well, we're out. Oh, there are a couple 3.8 bugs. Should we start with those, Bob? Uh, I think we can just go through the we'll, – we'll hit all of them. We'll hit uh, them in the end? All right. All right, starting at the top. Shortcut name attribute value cannot be specified with short name. Planner cannot be error. Can this run a candle? This is interesting. I mean, we have this, the problem with short name and long name being the same. Oh, yes. Um, in this case, they want to try to force their short name to be all uppercase, but in their long case, they want it to be lowercase. Mm. Yeah, that was that, that's fairly consistent with the 8.3 thing on Novell back in the, back in the day. Yes. Um, but... Oh, and, and this is dark, interestingly, too. Dark isn't handling this correctly. Yeah, I think dark, well, dark is darking a VD proj MSI here. Well, it should still work. It should. Um, but, yeah, I'd agree. I think dark is the one that should be not outputting both, I'm thinking. Unless it's legal to have upper and lower case. Well, it absolutely is legal. Do we want to allow that? If you give different cases, we'll let you put a short name that's identical to the long name? I, I, oh, oh, wait. Oh, no, 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 no. This is short name value blank. Blank? Cannot be specified with that attribute short name. Oh, that's bad. Oh, oh, oh okay. I know what the, this is a dark book. All right, this is a dark book because, um, well, no, name is now long name. Yeah, okay, this is busted. Someone should go look at this because this is just busted. Something yeah. in here is not right. <laughs> All right, yeah, cool. There's a bug in here. I don't think people use short names anymore. That we probably this bug's probably been in there for quite a while. Yeah, likely. All right, cool. Uh, drop in three nine. If no one picks it up, it's an easy bug. If no one picks it up. I'll get it because it's not right. Okay. Move tool set from V two to V four. Had three nine support will be. Yes, we could do this now. Uh, we could move from 2 to 4 in the 3x line. Of course, that would break everybody that expects the tool set to be 2. To well, be 2 I, compatible. My biggest concern is uh, part of dropping uh, VS2008 support is that we could drop... Um, we could drop MS Build 3.5 support, which would dramatically simplify our, um, our story there. The, well, it, it would simplify the tasks and, and the targets. Also, it would mean that we wouldn't require the V2 CLR um, in order to run the MS Build tasks. Remember, right. we got that bug yes. fairly late in, in 3.8 where we we require three uh, the three five one on the machine in order to run any of the MS build tasks. I do remember that. That that kind of blows. So I, I'm not sure we should move three nine to dot net two. Um, we already run as four. We already can run on four. It's only the MS build stuff that creates the problems for us. If, I, if we remove 2008 support and we remove MS Build 3.5 support, which I think we're doing, then I think we should leave the, two, the tool set at 2.0, just because I don't know what other things that will happen to other people. Oh, I'm I'm fine with with allowing it to continue. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just well, basically do nothing and allow the tools to still load in right. uh, to sell our. Yeah, I I, uh, I think we I, so I don't think we should take this bug or feature. Um. I As think. written, I would agree. Right. Uh, we should take this. We should do the votive. Well, you're already talking about doing the votive work, and then remove the MS Build 3.5 support, and then we can remove the check from the bundle so that it doesn't block for that anymore. Yes. Which all would be good stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think that would. I think that's all I was planning on. All right, cool. I think that's the right way to do. I don't think we should move from V2 to, to V4 in 3x native, whatever. All right. And of course, 
gallery is open for people that have strong opinions. Oh, Jacob showed up. Jacob, your 42 has been taken, so you're going to have to pick a different number. At some point, it's not valid to jump in the middle of it anymore. <laughs> All right, install path map incorrectly rejects files directories identifies that differ by case. I see. The Windows and Dollar identifiers are case sensitive. Is a path, but an identifier. Cool. This sounds like a bug. Oh, and looks like there's already a pull request for this bug. But if yes. there's a pull request, why isn't it assigned to? Let's assign it to Blair and call it good. He opened it and he did the pull request. So. And he can assign it to himself as an untriage. So. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Let's go ahead and give it to him and say, yeah, we could take it in three nine. Um. The VS projects in VS12 break the VS of command? I've never heard that of command. Yeah, one of those funky command window things. Of partial name. Oh, good. 363738. So this is probably that MPF thing that we're still doing wrong. I have zero clue whatsoever. Um, my hope is that switching yeah. MPFs will... Yes magically fix this bug. Yes. Sconce uh, is the MPF stuff in Votive. Yes. So, um, yep. I, I would generally agree at this point it probably is. I'm hoping because otherwise I don't know what the fix is. I don't understand what Windows would become unresponsive. That's busted. <laughs> oh, I read that as Windows apps. App Windows, not Windows the OS. That would be scary. Okay. Although, okay. if it's pegging a CPU, that could not help. All right. So, uh, yeah. So, I'm, I'm fine with taking this into 3X. Okay. Yeah, I, we should, we should fix other. it 3X. Yeah, it'd be awesome. That doesn't sound good. Never heard of the of command, but interesting. Burn fails with XP if user's not administrator. I don't think this is a bug. Or maybe not a... It's not a great experience, but if you're a standard user trying to run an elevated or a permachine bundle, it's going to fail. Right. And this is how it fails right now. It's not a great failure. Um, but yeah, they not. should block if they can't install. That's what you have to do on XP. Yeah. Um, so the only thing we could say is a better error message, or a better, because this isn't ideal way to figure that out. No, no. Don't know what that is. Oh, it's custom errors. Um. So yeah. So. Yeah, you can't actually change the user account and burn or in XP. It's not support. So yeah, so do we take this bug as improving this error message? But that's yeah, I think I'd like I'd like that. I think we can, you know, we can detect that we're not elevated or that we don't have the right privileges and um, and capture that as at least in the log as an explicit. Hey, we're not elevated. Okay. So the title of this is not a great, not great though. So all anyway. right. Yeah. All right. So three X. Uh, yeah. Not keeping it three eight. Oh. So yeah. All stops with message failed. Try again on three nine. Three nine is working. For, okay. Bundle path fail prompting source. Oh, failed to. Download a file from the looks of it. This is V4. Yeah. Oh, fine. So V4 is not working right. Whatever. It's fine. File not found. Where are we at here? Uh, where's the file? Uh, Fail to call out pilot 2. Hmm. Looking for port on MSI? Well, yeah. 
It doesn't say which V4 he's installing. Well, let's toss it at 4.0, because this is a real, if this is real, I'll go ahead. Uh, 1203. There, you saw that, but okay. Top line, on the right. Ah, there you go, version, blah. Um, will Wix 4.0 co-install with 3X? No, not today. Well, it, take that back. It probably will, but Votive probably gets taken over, so probably doesn't work out well in the end. And no, probably major upgrades probably remove everything. So no, probably not. Um, there's a request for us to do co to have 3.0 and 2.0 coexist, and we never finished that work, and so we'll have to decide if we want to try and make that work in 4.0. It's not a trivial amount of work to make that happen. For the tool set, it's easy. For Votive, it's Hard. extremely difficult. Yes. Um, so yeah, we, we should put that in 4. Um, we'll, we'll figure that out. Okay. Last screen bitmap will not display if it's a version 4 bitmap. Uh, okay. I don't care. Uh, I think this was on, there's a thread somewhere, Wix users or Wix devs, about load bitmap not taking a version 4 bump, but if you use load image... It does work? I, well, actually, that's a good question. I don't know if that's the case. Okay. I, mean, I think load using... bitmap is deprecated now. Yeah, but it's the thing that works on XP probably, so but whatever. That's a good point. That's a good point. So I I, I, I don't care. <laughs> uh, oh no, actually load image is available down to two thousand. Okay, well then we could use load image, but chances that it works differently than this seems really low, but whatever. Um okay. I, I don't care. Um <laughs> Yeah, if, if load image solved the problem, then fine, sure, it's an easy fix, but... So <laughs> we can either open this and put it in 3X, or we can resolve it suspended. I'm, I'm okay with suspended. I mean, I, I... Anybody want to keep this out there and whatever? Anybody? Can I get a vote up, down? Anybody care? Oh, actually, yeah, Jacob's point about needing a different WIC install is kind of annoying. Well, that's fine. So, like, again, suspended means if you want to go pull it out, you can pull it out. It just means that we're kind of like, eh. Uh, if someone wants to go pull it out of mothballs, they could go do that. Yeah. All right. Suspended um, it is. Yeah, okay. Remove empty MSI property. When the value evaluates to an empty string, it's helpful to remove the entire property. But it's possible to condition remove an MSI property without complex condition. Empty MSI properties aren't allowed anyway. I've added the following code, MSI engine concat properties to accomplish this. Oh, I see. So if a variable is empty or null, don't pass it. Don't pass it into the package. Yeah, and as long as you log, then that way people know that they did that. Right. As opposed to silently swallowing it. Eh, it's not bad. Yeah. I'm okay with taking this into 3x. Uh, or 3.9? Uh, I don't know, yeah. Uh, yes, I guess 3x, and then leave a comment in here to say, hey, go send a pull request, because we're not going to be able to take this like this. Yeah, we should probably resolve that question right now. Um, my, my inclination is is not to assign things to a particular release. Or, sorry, my inclination is not to assign things to 3.9 at this point. Uh, that's yeah. fine, except that it's already in 3.9 and the guy might do it. No, that's fine. Yeah, I, that's fine. We're we're going to need to... Yeah, I think that's fine. I think we need to figure out what the you know the theme of 3.9 is before we start saying, yes, we would definitely take this. Yeah, well, and Jacob has a whole point about pull request. Yeah, but this is more of a, you know, do we want this or not? And I think 3.9 is going to be mostly... I, I don't, look, we're always going to take small bug fixes, small features that people are... Absolutely. Willing to 
could do. And this totally falls into that space. So yep. we would take this in 3.9, but fine. I'm fine putting it in 3x and saying, do the process to bring it in, and we will be happy to triage it again when you have a pull request. There you go. All right, fine. Optional bundle attribute to set version attribute to something other than the bundle version. Oh, right, I saw this on my stuff. I really don't want to put another thing out there. I agree. Um, <sighs> we get into we get into a point where we have a lot of uh, moving parts that make it really difficult to understand. Well, yeah, the bundle attribute already is big as it is. Exactly. Yeah, there's way, there's a lot yeah, of the bundle element has a lot of attributes as it is. Um, now, as I recall, this was this is because of the the way we attach containers, right? Uh, it, so. it, it seems like you should be able to modify the resource stream after the fact, but it wouldn't surprise me if that doesn't work, I guess. Right. But you can already do sad. this with Insignia, right? Insignia already does this. Insignia does take it all apart and puts it all back together, but it does not update the version number. Sorry, I'm saying you could use Insignia to, to do the debundling and... At the point you've detached the container, you can then use um, I don't tool. know that you can do it with Insignia, because Insignia doesn't take off the uh, the BA container. Oh. So if you lose all... Con remember, there's there's two attached yeah. containers. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you lose all attached containers, that won't work. If if it's... Yeah, yeah, okay. You're right. We need, to, we need a way to take off all the containers. Mm, yeah. That's interesting. Um, so, so I guess I'm okay with this bug as a concept. We need a way to be able to do this. Um, I vehemently disagree that the way to do it is with another attribute. Uh, so much stuff. Well, you know, you could do it. You have to write a tool that's like Insignia and do a lot of extra work. Yeah. And I don't uh, uh, really. Why do you want? Like, I'm not even sure. Really, like this. Well, that's sure. why I'm. I, that's why I'm against it. I understand it. it this is, you know, from a well, we should be able to do anything perspective. Sure, but realistically, well, you, you, how you many can do anything. Do this? You can do anything. You can. It's just binary files in the end. Um, yeah, right. I don't know. I don't know what to do with this. This is one of those we end up with tons and tons of stuff. And really, you can't just update the resource stuff with the attached containers. It has to mess that up. Uh, well, there's, I think the thread was at least the DTF functions to, to do that uh -huh. don't work when there are using them strips the container. I see. Uh, uh, if, if someone, I, I, my response to this bug is, I mean, why, why do you need a different, I mean, what's, what's the use case? Convince me that this is something that the tool set should in some way support it all. It, I, it's not. It'll mess up every. I mean, it's really nice to be able to just go look at the bundle and know the version of it before you even install it. Yeah. <sighs> if yeah. if there was a if there was a use case that I I I went oh yeah okay I guess I can see that then. Then we can talk about, you know, so do we solve it with an attribute? No. Or do we solve it with, you know, an insignia-like tool? Whatever. You know, that's that's the question at the end, I think, for me. So I guess what we can do is we can say no in the way that we've said no to other bugs, 
and then we can say basically go to Wix devs and we'll come up with something if you have to be able to do this of the way to look at how you do it. I mean, that's basically what we'll have to come down to because we don't think this is something the Wix tool set should do. Right, and basically go, well, look at Insignia because it can kind of do what you want. Right, right. Well, and, and you know, Tobias brings up a good point, too. It's like if if you can explain why you need something, it's going to help if you're not around to uh, talk about it during triage. Well, you know, people are going to learn that as we do a better job with our bugs. I mean, we haven't done a great job in our bugs in the past, so. That's fair. You know, just tossing bugs at it was like, well, I'll just toss a bug and now that we're going to be responsive, they'll be like, oh, well, they'll learn. <laughs> My bug just got denied because I didn't put enough information in it. Um, it doesn't work if you just do update resources. Suck. Um, well, I don't think we should put this. All right, so I don't think we, we don't think we should put this in the cold tool set. So let's go ahead and make this bug go no. Um, feel free to add the part about, you know, adding motive may change that. You know, if it's a good motive or they can motivate it for <clears throat> the entire world, you know, well, everybody will be able to do this for X would be like, oh, we never thought of that. That's a good point. Um, and <clears throat> let me see. And even then, unless there's a good general motive, we should just go to Wixdev and try to give them a solution that will work if they have to do this. You know, it's like, well, if you had to do this, you would do these kinds of things. Good luck. Right? I mean, that that's, works. that's the options if we're going to say no and we can go do that. I would hope that update... Oh, man. I guess it doesn't surprise me. A lot of things in the resource of an XE that has disappointed me in the past, which is how we got to the design of burn as it is. So, uh, anyway, let's do that. I think that's what we'll do here. Okay. All right. Who gets low? They're going to be more right than not. Whoever was... Yeah. All right. Wix tool set. Yeah, this is the one I saw coming that I'm worried about. Yeah, me too. Uh, oh, there is a burn log now. Um, oh, that's interesting. <sighs> okay, what's the issue here? SP1 level less than one. Oh, we exit with exit code zero. These are going to be viewed as successes. Mm. That's too bad. Oh well. Yeah, shutting down. Exit code zero. Uh, all right. Well, um, this seems like a bug. Or at least needs to be go look at more. Yes? I've lost Bob. He's all looking at the code. Yeah. Um, what is all this? 1031. Oh, it's all the different. It's all the different parts of Wix being detected. Yeah. It's like, whoa, yes, that's right. Yes, that means he had a previous version on the machine, which is fine. Yeah, well. Yeah, that. That's interesting. Um, well, yeah, I actually, uh, I don't actually have, oh, I do have a machine with 8.1. Oh, this is 8.1? Yeah. Okay. Well, it seems like we should look at it. I'm not sure. What do we do with this? Do we re-release 3.8? Um, perhaps. If, if I mean, if it actually affects all Windows 8.1 installs, we might have to. Yeah. See, I didn't hit it on my 8.1 machine because I have still a Visual Studio 2010 installed. Well... 
Yeah, but it's not... All right, let's not debug it here. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I will. I will take a look at this one. Where are we gonna Where are we gonna put it? Um, let's put it into three nine for today. Okay. And if it's actually a problem that's going to block all installs on WinBlue, then uh, that will be a different conversation. I hope we don't have that one. Yeah. Uh -uh. Me too. <laughs> All right. Not fun. Wix uninstall issue. Uninstalling without asking for a confirmation. I hit cancel and after a long wait. Fail back, try again instead of uninstall cancel. Yeah, that kinda sucks. What's the oh well Ugh. Yeah, wait, why did it why did it fail? Well, because you hit cancel? Although cancel should have said cancel, not failure. Uh, yeah, that's weird because the final final H result is user exit. All right, that's good. I wish this had been indented. Markdown, people, markdown. Anyway, um. Um, so, all right, so the user experience could be improved when you hit cancel. Fine. 3x, I mean, sure, if someone wants to go in Wix BA and make it cooler, I'm all for that. Like, adding a link to a log file, I think, if someone asked for it, I'm like, yeah, we should totally do that. So, uh, yeah, so uh, I, we could totally do this. This could get better. Sure. 3x? That works for me. All right, because that totally could be a better experience. Offline setup contains a web installer for .NET FX. Layout. So we have. I, I, we should probably fix this, but you know, to be clear, this isn't a bug. This is this is a a choice. You know, we chose to use the the web bundle for .NET. Oh. And and that's that's a perfectly reasonable choice because. You know, using the web bundle can be fast. Well, it can require less downloads, less down, less fewer downloaded bytes. Put it that way, um, as opposed to using the full installer. The full installer carries a bunch of language packs and and .NET for both architectures. Um, Using the web installer, you can actually cut down by more than half what you actually have to download. Um, the problem is we all think of slash layout as the create the offline image, but that's not what it does. Well, it does for uh, this thing, which happens to include a web installer for one of its prereqs. Well, yeah. I mean, we could fix it. I'm not sure how much work it takes to fix it. It's an interesting scenario to think through and try to solve. Do we have a .NET FX 4.0 web? Yes, Jacob, that's what we use in the Wix toolset, is a .NET FX 4.0 web. That's what we use in the Wix toolset. Um, so yeah, I mean, we could we could talk about the way to do layout and how to get a completely offline thing. I mean, there is a workaround, which is install .NET Framework 4.0 yourself. Yeah. With the full version. But then you have to go create your own distribution mechanism for doing that, as opposed to just rolling out Wix. So there is that. Yes. Uh, it should be, I mean, look, to be honest, I, I'm perfectly fine if we switch uh, switch to using the downloaded full installer for .NET. I mean, you know, that seems reasonable to me. Um, but the web package is actually um, more popular in part because it you know, saves you 30 or 40 megs of download. Right. Which for some people... You don't end up downloading the things you don't... the, the architectures <laughs> you don't need and things like that. Just like Burn. 
Uh, Jacob asks, yes, if this only impacts users who want to do layout Wix for SneakerNet. And yes, it is just for SneakerNet installs. But that's just, not a small scenario. That's not a small scenario? Well, I don't know how many people well, do SneakerNet installs for Wix. Yeah, okay. Yeah, there is. Yeah, there's that, a few. That don't have .NET already on their machines. You know, that's kind of what well, we're that, I yeah. guess it's the, it, actually, you know, what it is, it's the build machine scenario. Although, in the build machine, that doesn't already have the .NET Framework 4.0 on it. You're like, oh. You're not even running <laughs> what are you Visual building? Speed. What are you yeah. building? Um, uh, all right, we're not going to solve this here. So, yeah, we could take it in 3x, and we should go, we could have a go interesting discussion on Wix devs about the different ways of doing this. Yeah. So it's interesting. Registry Win64 doc bug. On there says the value depends on the package platform attribute. Oh, isn't the package platform attribute deprecated? Um, yeah, I think it is. And so, and it probably tells you he's using 3.6. That's Fine. Uh, was 3.6? I think we deprecated it in 3.5, actually. I mean, it's better to use the package platform. Platform. Use of this attribute is discouraged. Instead, specify the arch switch. So we. this is reasonable. We should fix this doc to not talk about that yeah. attribute. We should talk about the switch instead. Yep, I agree. Cool. So we could put that in 3x. Absolutely. Installing a PB7 certificate fails. Right. We only support PFX files. It actually says failed to open PFX file. Yeah. So this could be a doc bug and saying. Right. Yeah. It's a. <laughs> Uh, a doc bug saying it only supports PFX. I, I just had to go through this and I had to convert a, a P7B into a PFX because that's the only thing that you could upload into Azure and, IW, and IS or something like that and things like that. So I'm like, yeah, PFXs are better anyway. They wrap it with a password and stuff. So I don't. So is this a doc bug anyway? Then maybe that's what this is: is a doc bug saying we only support PFXs. I assume it could be. If you want it to be. I, think, I I don't know that the doc is that is is that specific. Yeah, right. Yeah, Jacob. Right. So I mean, that's what we could say. We, this supports PFX files. If you don't have a PFX file, create one. Have a nice day. That works. Or we could just go. Hey, look, the error message is pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Jacob's right there with me. He's like, yeah, but the error message is explicit. Um. I don't care. What do people want to do? I, I, I toss out the doc as an option. Or do we just go, yeah, the error message says make it a PFX file. Anybody want to vote? Doc bug. Bob? Sure. All right. Make it a doc bug. Ship it. 3x. Not 3.9. Jacob goes in 3x. Someone has to go choose to pick it up. Right. Preprocessor dynamic and variable support. Yeah, this is not a bug. Okay. This is not a bug. Um, this is command out XE supports what I think they call dynamic variables. Okay. But they're just you know they're fake. Oh, command adds command out XE yeah. adds some environment variables. Fine. So yeah, we don't use command out XE. We only use your environment variables. No. Right. Next. Strange message for IS certificate to current user location on Windows 8. Really? Wow. Wow. Be nice if they gave us the log message from MSI. Oh. Do these certificates throw UI like this? I don't know. Maybe. Excellent. Um, yeah. 3x. <laughs> 
That'd be awesome to go fix it. I like, look at this, it's a picture. How cool is that? So, yes, something's not right there. Okay. Right? I mean, come on, that's not good. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, this is good. This is a great bug. It'd be great if someone wanted to fix that. Three Actually, hours. it's, and they have, they even, it's an open source project, so they have uh, Sweet. a link to the source code. Awesome. When using burn built-in UI, seems default install folder is useless unless you actually view the option page. No way. There's no way that's true. I agree. I've done this. I've done this so many times it works. I haven't done it now. I haven't done it in the last five days. <laughs> uh, or, I guess it's not even that long. 30 days. Uh... Give this to me. Put it. Give it to me, and I'll go create a test repro of this. I'll, it won't take me that long. Okay. That that if it doesn't work, it'll get fixed in three nine. So. All right. Are we? We're still in the current present. Wow. Using purely Wix page reference patch sequence required to clarify basic. After that to that. What are those different? The same. <laughs> oh, the version number is different. Oh, version number, okay. Cool, so it's a doc bug. Yeah, we should take that. Okay. Right? I mean, yeah, that does kind of suck. Add harvesting things through. Hey, we're in, we're in ancient times again. Yay. Create new harvest projects. Yeah, we should do that. We can put it in 3x. We have so much in this space. So much of this doesn't work. This will be one more thing that should work. From Wait, no, no, no. This is... Sorry, I'm not clear what they're asking for. This sounds like they want harvesting they want... support and votive. Right. They want harvest... If you add a harvest project, these elements, these items to the project file, votive will show them as like little things. So they want the ability to add them and do all that kind of stuff. Inside Votive. Inside Votive. Okay. I'm like, yeah, sure. Someone could go add that feature to Votive, along with all the other features that have to be fixed to make it work. Yes. <laughs> I mean, yes. Max processors does not work. Large, dedicated web garden, max processors, yada, yada, yada. How to allocate. Okay. Uh, I don't understand. Okay. Um, three X. I mean, going and doing the right thing to this seems reasonable. I don't want to debug it right now, right? Okay. But I, I don't. There's something in here that maybe go evaluate whether we're doing max processes correct. Someone wants to go get in there. So it could go in 3x and someone could pull it. Okay. Otherwise, we're going to have to go dig in and figure out the book that guy wrote and f try to figure out what it is. Uh, to make it easier for people to see the usage without running question mark, Wix chum should contain the information. Quick reference. Usage information should be auto-generated from the same source as the tools. Always be in sync. Wow. Uh, a candy bug. Uh, shh, uh, I don't care. Um... <laughs> I, I, well, first of all, I think I think it's the opposite. the 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 way to do this is to generate oh. yes. is to generate the short help from longer help, not to repeat the short help that's short because it has to fit in eighty columns or whatever. You know. I, actually, you know, the way to fix this is hmm. to do what everybody else does now, and that is to launch a web page for your help. When somebody does help what or slash question mark, open up a web browser. 
uh, no, not everyone does this. Git does this, and it sucks. Oh, you don't like that? All right, fine. <clears throat> well, then, I, I don't care about this bug. Well, I, whatever. Do you want to keep it, and someone could do the work to hook this all together? Maybe Robert will come back and do something. I don't know. Chums are chums are great. <laughs> chums chums are offline and always work, even when Google is down. I mean, Bing is down. No, I mean Google. It's right. Ninety-seven, great year. <laughs> um, but you can replace Chum with Web. So in this case. Yes, it would be in the web, too, because our web and chum come from the same place. Yeah. Um, the chum file is just offline web. So, yes, no. Are we putting this in 3x? Um, or do we not care? Well, there's a certain bit of not caring. Um, then we could drop it and suspend it and call it good. So right now we have, you know, all the switches are documented, hopefully, um, or at least some number of switches are documented. Yep. yep. Um, so <laughs> um, blah, 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 blah. um Actually, I guess we can we can basically. I mean, the usage information is in there. Right now, it's done by hand. Right. Which means um, it gets out of date. It it gets out of date because probably we add switches and we update the usage, and that's you know fine. Right. Um, so this is about connecting those two things together, such that the XE build and the the help build are all tied together somehow, which I'm not even. I yeah that 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 sounds really yeah I guess I'm I'm approaching suspended on this one. It's a fine idea, but it's, and I love automating stuff, but uh, I think it's probably more automation effort than is it's actually worth. All right, we'll suspend it. See if anybody comes back to it. I uh, s uh, non HTTP bindings to allow configuration of non-HTTP bindings. Oh, right, like FTP? <laughs> okay. Uh. <laughs> so an uh, FTP site, or whatever they name those things now. <laughs> um, yeah. Yes, go for <laughs> What? Oh, yes, Garrett being funny. So, Does... yeah, I, I, sure, we could do that in 3X, totally additive. I don't know who's going to bother because I don't know if anybody cares about FTP that much, anymore, which is nobody cares about Gopher. But yeah. Um, all right. Need support in the web app pool to set the app pool identity to the identity of the app pool. As yet. Well, yes. Right. Um, sure. Uh, we could take that feature if it's not already supported. Could be done in three exit teams, right? I have. No opinion on IAS related things. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Project reference needs heat parameters in XSLT transform. Changing that, all that. Lots of that's why XSLT is this is desperately need to make harvesting useful. Needs basic manip can only be provided with an XSLT transform. Oh, I, I see. I, so they want the ability to add an XSLT transform to that thing. Ah, totally could totally add that feature. So and much. it's desperately needed. It is. Totally. I'm assuming you think this is 3X? Sure. Could be done in 3X, along with all the other bugs that are related. I mean, this is why we cut the freaking thing in the first place. There's so many problems with it that it just wasn't... It, it's a lot of work to go into that space and make it all work. It'd be cool. Someone has a Apache Maven thing. We should document that here? No. <laughs> no. If you want Maven, you can go get their docs. They have docs. Cool. They have docs. Awesome. Go use theirs. We don't do Maven here. <laughs> and I'm happy. I'm thrilled that somebody maintains it, but I don't want to get into that business. 2643. Oh, shoot. I need to look. 
402, 402, I have not refreshed yet, okay? So we start at 402. Somebody remember that, because I'm going to forget. 2643. 402, it's like 42, but with an extra digit. 2643. <laughs> Stop! 2643. Uh, 2639, you're going to make me go back to the audio so I can figure out what the number was. No. Uh, all right. Heat doesn't harvest registered referenced assemblies. Yes, that's true. It doesn't go down, all of that. That's another one of those things that nobody did correctly when we did this feature. So it could totally be done in 3x. So I'm going to go fix this and all of the other problems. Yeah, this part right here. It would be awesome for someone to solve that problem. IS default documents cannot be turned off. Interesting. Okay. Uh, that, that seems reasonable. All right, cool. Yeah, we could fix that. Can we down in 3x? Yes? Uh, okay. I feel, I feel like I'm talking all by myself. Yeah, like I said, IS, key, I have no opinion. No opinion. Well, I, it's basically, it could be done. Someone wants to go in there and do those things. If possible, XSLT enable script to true so he can, ex I can extend Excel with custom code when needed. Oh, that's interesting. Would we disable that? I don't think we disable it, but I think you have to explicitly. Enable, sorry. Should we, should we allow it? I don't know if it would be anything bad because it's your code. It's not like you're going an XSLT off the internet. Although if you were, no. Um, <laughs> I suppose we could do that. Someone could do that in 3x. I mean, if it's as easy as that, I'm too bad the guy didn't send us a change from a long time ago. But anyway, common font for descriptions and titles. Simple way to change font of titles. They use the default font. Um, okay. Sure. All right. <laughs> it's works UI. Woo-hoo. <laughs> My turn to go. I don't care. So, right. So that so we could this could be done in three X, right? You could add a default style and make it all right, I presume, without breaking things. Um. Well, no, you would break things, but you could fix everything except for people who've done custom localizations, but they're going to keep their defaults, so yeah, it should all work. Awesome. 3x. No option to keep empty directories in votive harvesting. Or okay. project, project, yeah. Yeah, fine. Integer only edit control. Doesn't intrinsically support that. That's true. Add a custom action which does this. Add a custom control type which does this under a hood. Can't well, add custom control types. Yeah. So we could add a custom action that does this. Wix slip. Well, that's not the right. Oh well, yeah. I, I guess that is where it was way back <laughs> when. <laughs> oh gosh, ancient history here. So yeah, we could we could implement this. Is burn, <laughs> Jacob? It's called burn, and you're B8. Well, I think we know that Jacob's on board with the the new burn UI. Um, so anyway, yeah, it could be done in three X. Or do you want to? Or do you want to put that in suspended? I don't care about this. Should we suspend it because we don't care? It's not yes. a great. Exp All right, let's suspend it because even that experience isn't going to be that great for a custom action. It's not. No, it's not. Burn, wow, burn back here? This is like early burn. Current operators, yeah, yeah, use uses substrings bitwise. For strings, this is very confusing. Should we replace with functions like start with, and it was, mm, only work on engine use 64-bit, and their engine does not give expected results. Suggesting we should remove bitwise operators for numerics. This does not seem practical. Well? I think we did that. I don't think we have bitwise operators, do we? I don't remember. I think I think they're gone. Um, cool. And we're not going to do starts with, contains, and ends with. We're just going to use the MSI thing for now. 
So this is all won't fix? Or all fixed. <laughs> Which way you want to look at it? <laughs> we fixed two and we're punting one, so whichever way you want to do it. This, kids, is why you do not put two issues in one feature. <laughs> Right. I will, uh, yeah, I, I, I say we punt this as no and then let them deal with the fact that <laughs> they lost the other half of their bug. Don't do that. Very annoying. Th this is from Matt Kaufman, so I don't think he'll care. Yeah, right. All right, fine. Um, use advertise equals yes when compile candle returns this. Class server cannot be added when the parent is yes. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. The error message is incomplete. Yes. Okay. I Yes, that's true. The error message is incomplete. It's correct, but incomplete. It's missing the fact that class server is inherited from file when nested underneath file. Ah, right. So, yeah, we should take that in 3x. It's an improvement to an error message. Always up for those. Yes? Sure. Multiple language merge modules. When you do this, contains that, contains transformers that. Light failed to fetch file row. It's because the rows are missing from the generated tables. The function is used, which takes care of light, whereas the is used. Oof. I create a blank merge module, merge the module to that saved it templication source. Since module opens use new MSMs was transformed MS. Uh we don't in general have any real support for multi language merge modules. Well, beyond what MSI provides. Well, but I mean we don't do the we don't do the sub storage thing. Yeah. I'm not sure this is a problem. This almost sounds like a problem with his merge module. The transfer removes some files. Fail to fetch a file row from database that was merged in from a module. Fail to fetch file row. But if it was merged in, that means the transform didn't take it. Yeah, we could take this in 3x. It might be a problem just with transforms that delete files. So they have more files than they have a transform that removes files instead of doing it the other way, like usually that people add files. So we could put it in 3x. Although at some point, I don't know if we're going to care that much because these are kind of going out of style. Um, Were they ever in style? No, no, fair enough. So, yeah, all right. I can kind of see what they're doing there. Hmm. Okay. All right, let's try to do one more. Hey, yes, this bug. Adds permissions, but it's always inherited. Didn't we have another? I swear we did this bug, a bug just like this. <laughs> that was about inheriting keys from our permission ex thing. Didn't we do a bug like this last week? Or I'm or? pretty sure. Although technically that one was probably on folders. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> this is the whole permission ex always does inherited, and MSI never does. And if you use them in different ways, you can get basically the behaviors you want, but not all. And it's like ours should just be better. Yes. So. Yeah, we should fix that. Let's go ahead and we can kill this one off. I think we have. We have Norwegian now, so I think we can toast this. Cool. Um, 2573. It's five after. We're done. All right, there we go. All right, so what do I get? 2573 here. That one can go away. 2573.
three. All right, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six from that. We're at 402. This was 30. One, two, three, four, five. Still six. So 36 bugs. Who gets 36? Got to go back I'm, in the history. I might, I might be the winner. Bob got 30. I got 35. <laughs> oh, damn it. Yeah. And if I hadn't taken that last bug and pushed it for Norwegian, I would have won today. That's sad, though, because I really wanted us to get more close to the people that were guessing 45 and stuff like that, because that's what we want. <laughs> but anyway, hey, we're under 400. Yes, sir. That's good stuff. So there we go. Triage on this, you know, wonderful December morning or afternoon or evening, whatever it might be. Um, we're going to pick this up again next Tuesday and next Thursday. So again, no status meetings for the next few weeks. We're just going to go and plow through bugs and see how many we can get. I think that gives us, if we do Christmas Eve, which we'll see if we do or not, uh, will give us five sessions. So if we were to do five sessions at 30 each, although they are getting easier, I think these old bugs are easier than the other ones, because it's kind of like, yeah, we could do that. Then that would be 150 bugs, which would put us, ooh, we could get, I give us good odds that we can get under 200. Absolutely. Which would be, I'd love to get under 100. That's probably aggressive. But we'll see. Um, maybe if we get all your chatterbox on the, the side here. No, I'm joking. I love having a peanut gallery talking about everything they talk about, which is not a whole lot. But that's okay. Uh, Jacob, I hope you keep showing up because you make me happy with your burn BA things. So uh, that's it for December 5th. Uh, status and triage for number 12. And then we'll go there. Um, have a wonderful afternoon and we'll see you guys next week. Cheers. Bye.